The principles of countersinking. Countersinking is used mainly for two reasons. Reason number one is just to deburr the hole so that you do not have a sharp edge. Number two is used for a bolt so that way the head of the bolt doesn't stick above the part. Especially when you're using a flathead and that's what a countersink is for, for flatheads. Two rules I would like to go over is number one, a metric uh, bolt is going to be 90 degree countersink and a standard bolt is going to be 82 degrees. The number two rule is always countersink it to where the head of the bolt goes below the face. If an engineer calls it out to where it's exactly flush, go ahead and make it to print. But you might want to go ahead and ask your boss or whoever you're designing this for if you want the head of the bolt to go below because that's what a countersink is for. Usually a countersink you want to go slow, you want to go about uh, just a couple hundred uh, on the spindle speed. On aluminum obviously you can go a little faster. You can use a little bit of oil and uh, it's very simple. The only other thing you need to know is how to go about measuring your countersink. We will be providing you guys a chart that lets you know for every time you go down 10 thou, it opens up the countersink diameter a specific amount with certain degrees. So for 90 degrees, let's say you want to have a half inch diameter on your countersink and you, when you measure it with calipers across the diameter, you get, let's say 480. Well, what you do is you take 0.5 minus 480, which will be 20, and you divide that by two and that lets you know how much you need to bring your knee up. So it'll be 0.5 minus 0.480 and that'll obviously be 20 thou and then you divide that by two so you need to raise your knee up 10 thou. And that's because of the 90 degrees. And again we will, we will be providing you guys a chart that you can use for the different degree of countersinks. So we are going to uh, use this as an example. We have a M6 bolt so a six millimeter bolt, and we're gonna measure the head of the bolt. So I'm gonna just take my calibers and measure over the diameter. And we have about 460. So we want our diameter of our countersink to at least be more than 460. So the first thing you want to do is you want to barely touch the hole. So you're gonna turn the spindle on, cut a little bit of material, and then you want to put your quill stop so that whenever you bring your quill stop down, it hits your material and your stop at the same time. That way you can bring your knee up accordingly. So what we are going to do is we're gonna turn the spindle on. We're gonna come down and we're barely gonna to touch. And you can turn it off. And then what you need to do is get a quill stop. put your quill stop up against your your quill that way whenever you go up and down it's hitting your part and the quill stop at the same time now what we can do is measure this diameter and that will let us know what we need how far we need to bring the knee up so you're just measuring quadrant to quadrant and I roughly have about 310. So if we want to go point, uh, what was it? It was 460. So we need to be around 0.480. So 0.480 minus 0.310 is 170 divided by two. That is 85. So the very next thing I need to do is I'm gonna zero out my knee and I'm gonna bring it up 85 thou. Now that I have brought it up 85 thou, we're going to turn our spindle on. And we're going to bring our countersink down. In a can, you can use oil. It'll keep the aluminum from gumming up, so we'll just put a little bit of oil on there.
And then the very last thing you need to do is test the countersink and make sure that your, the head of your bolt goes below the, head, the top of your part. And it does. Now the same concept works when prints call out a specific size chamfer. You can measure from quadrant to quadrant or you can measure over the diameter. So you can measure from here to here. So from the quadrant of the chamfer to the nearest quadrant. And then you can measure across the diameter. And then you take what you have or what you want minus what you have and divide that by two and that lets you know how much further your countersink needs to go into your part. And that is how you countersink.